Okay, where have I heard this from? Meta has just released a pair of augmented reality glasses. This actually isn't the first time Meta has released a pair of glasses. It's the first time Facebook Meta has released a pair of augmented reality or true augmented reality glasses. But over a decade ago, I worked in a startup called Meta in whew, probably about 12 years ago now, actually, maybe 13 years ago, where we released the first pair of a commercial augmented reality glasses. This was just before Google Glass came out, which famously, or not famously, I would say if you listen to any of my talks, you know that I do not classify that as augmented reality. Well, Meta, Facebook's Meta, has released Orion. It's not a commercial product. We're not gonna go and review the product. Again, it's not a review channel. Uh, I wanna talk about something specifically that I think caught my eye very quickly when I watched a little clip of Mark releasing it. Um, we're on first name basis. Um, and I gotta say, by the way, just a quick thing, his look, I don't know, did this just change now or has he been changing his look? Like his, yeah, very, very different. He looks like a, I'm not gonna say what he looks like, but the whole, the old like hoodie and everything. Yeah, wow, big change. But um, I've seen people calling it the, I, the Meta's iPhone uh, moment. There's lots of different things happening. It's very interesting that actually this is the second pair of, let's call it true augmented reality, uh, pair of glasses that have come out in the last couple of days. Snapchat released the Spectacles 5, which I did a brainstorm a few days ago. You're welcome to go watch that. If I can, if I remember to, before I publish this, I will leave a link below so you can go watch that. But we've, we've finally got a product that it's no longer pass-through augmented reality or pseudo-augmented reality as I call it. This is now true augmented reality where you're seeing the world, your eyes are available to the world, to the, to the world and um, yeah, all the, all the, he talks, if you go look at the launch, he talks about um, all the technical challenges you have to get through. He said he's been working on this or put together a team 10 years ago, um, which was a few years after uh, we got started. In this space, um, it looks very interesting. Again, I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is not for consumers. This is not for every person. This is uh, for developers and a few select, um, few select group of people. I think it's not even for developers. Very interesting that they've got a few modes of um, interacting with a the device. They're, they're, they're definitely using, I guess it's more designed to be a wristband, but it kind of reminds me, I think it was Miro or Mio. I have to remember the company that made like a, um, kind of like a, a piece that looks like this that went on your, um, that went over here, I'm blanking on the word uh, of what it is now, your, is it, it's not a bicep, it's a, <laughs> whatever. Um, wow, this is not very good, that I'm not, <laughs> I don't know regular anatomical uh, parts. Um, but anyways, moving right along. Um, so it, I think it's using a, a very similar type of thing. And then it's also got like a little um, controller. They do use, gestures, but unlike Apple, which uses natural gestures, or at least attempting to use natural gestures, they went with this idea of using third-party accessories, which um, if you watch my Vision Pro brain streams, you know that I am against. I think that we, in this world, we should be looking for more natural pair of glass, uh, pair of um, way of interaction with, that, with, with our device. And that's our five senses, right? That's not just gestures. That's also our voice. That's that's all our five senses, um, and it's not necessarily putting accessories. I'm not necessarily opposed to accessories to help out as, um, as an augmentation, let's, let's just use that word, but I am opposed to it being that first method of interacting with the device. Now I understand the idea, the, the argument of um, that maybe you don't have enough sensors, um, and in such a small device you, might, you can't put as many cameras around your glasses like the Vision Pro was able to, and therefore you're limited in what you can do and you're really trying to get to this point of using hands. But, um, so, so I get a lot of these things, the problem of a lot of these companies is that they're using the, the, the lack of technology to kind of give us these crutches, um, kind of like what mobile AR was, was like, okay, we've got millions of devices, let's just move forward with that and then we'll bring out these other pieces. Which I think brings me perfectly into the thing that I wanna talk about, and I talk about this a while and I think that what I'm gonna use the next five minutes is, is maybe reason through it in my head with you guys of very quickly what I saw that the main form of interacting is holograms. I mean, he uses the term, but a flat screen hologram floating in front of you. Now I'm wondering, well, why are we seeing every company do this? Is it because this is the current paradigm we're used to 
and it's just super easy to take a mobile OS version or even let's say even a Mac OS, so not even mobile, but this idea of a flat screen paradigm has been with us for so many decades that this is the, just the easiest thing to do or is it that that's the best thing to do? Now I would like to argue and I would like to think as well that it's not the best thing to do. I think it's the former actually. I, th I, th I do think it's just, um, I don't think it's laziness because I think lots of money, time and effort and, and real talent is put into these companies to release these kind of products. But it almost seems like a kind of a, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it feels like, um, just like it's so easy to get out of because everyone's doing it and it's just not the right way. I mean, I'll give Apple for example. I don't know if this is necessarily the best thing, but this comes to my head at first. Apple famously does not put their iPad OS into a MacBook or at least all put Mac OS into an iPad. And it's keeping the two classes separate because it's saying that the way that you interact with it, the interface, is, is, is just not designed for that. So if they put a touchscreen on a computer, you, you, your a laptop is designed, the interface is designed that your hands are resting. So if you're on the trackpad or on the keyboard, keep the keyboard for hours on, a, on end, it doesn't really matter, your, your hands are not high in the air, right? There's a big thing of why gestures should not be these big, grand, uh, minority report type of gestures. Uh, this is one of the things that you learn very, very quickly when you start de designing these gestures. This is what we did back in the day. We're like, oh, how can we make these big grabbing and things? And this is the gestures we had in the early versions of Meta. Very quickly, when you do that and you give it to developers and you work with it, you find out very, very quickly that hands in the air or controlling it is not good for long term. Very, very quickly, you're going to get tired. But so over here, you have a massive company that refuses to put um, a different kind of operating system because the interaction, the interface, the input is very, very different. Um, because they say to have your hand up and touch screen the way the laptop is supposed to is just not um, as comfortable. Now, there's many arguments around that, and you could also say that they just don't want to cannibalize their own products, but then you have the whole Steve Jobs argument that's like, if I'm going to cannibalize any product, I'd rather cannibalize my own product quickly before another company can cannibalize my own product. And he did this famously with the iPhone, cannibalized the iPod sales, and uh, there's many, many examples. So I'm wondering over here, what's happening? When you put a screen in front of you, Control, the, the screen far away was designed with a mouse. The mouse control was there. When the screen came close, the way that we were able to do it was, was famously the multi-touch, the, the application. Once Apple was able to get this technology and this technology was working reliably, the multi-touch, that's the, what the iPad first, it was the iPad was designed around it. Then they actually built the iPod, iPhone afterwards, released the iPhone first, but the technology was designed for the iPad. But you have in some form, f haptic feedback. You, you don't properly have like a vibration or raise buttons, but you do, you can fill the glass. Your hand doesn't go through it. But this operating system is literally putting an iPad floating in front of you. And I, for the life of me, cannot understand, besides laziness, I do not understand why we're doing it. I, like, I wonder, would Steve Jobs actually allow that? Would, would this with the Vision Pro, and I've, I know I've tilted towards Apple and not so much on Facebook right now, but I see it on every single device that's coming out. Would he have ever let this happen? You, you have interfaces that are designed, that, that, that designed with at least touch over there or a mouse over there where you have a little bit of feedback that your hand doesn't go through something. You put a keyboard in midair, you put these floating, th th these floating screens in front of you. The way that you gesture is, yes, you don't put your hand out and try tap it because yes, we know there's no feedback, your hand's gonna go through it. But still, it's designed in such a way that we use certain gestures to kind of tap and, 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 and pop and, and kind of control things far away, which, which would make sense, again, as a secondary type of thing. But why do these things exist in... Why? This flat screen hierarchy, I just don't get it. I don't understand it from... from, from la I can only attribute it to laziness. That's the primary form. I don't disagree that that's a form that you would like to have in the operating system. I just don't understand why we're, why we're okay, why Apple's okay, why Meta's okay, why any of these companies are okay with saying that we're okay with just shipping out these products that are literally floating iPads and MacBooks, a 2D paradigm in a 3D world, and the best we can come up with is a floating iPad in front of us. I don't get it besides laziness. I'd like if anyone could explain it to me. Anyways, I'll see you guys.
in the future.